April 9th. It was about 60 degrees two days ago. And now we got, oh, six inches of snow and it's still dumping out. So this is awesome. All right, we're in the other garage. So in the last video, I talked to you guys and mentioned something about we're gonna be getting a trolling motor on the boat. Uh, for those of you who follow the channel enough, we got a boat at the end of last season, 17 foot side console, and didn't come with a trolling motor. So I wanted to get a decent trolling motor that had the iPilot just for the spot lock feature, the anchor feature, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so I ended up going with the Trova. And I put it on the boat already, so spoiler alert, this isn't really an install video. I just want to show you guys how I did it because, um, you know, the directions tell you one thing, but you always run into problems. And just show you how I set it up on my boat. So here it is all mounted on my boat. Um, this is a V-Hull. This is not really a bass boat. Um, I use it for trolling and stuff and bass fishing in the summer. So uh, we get this on here. This is a... 55 pound thrust, 54 inch shaft, 12 volt trolling motor. And I went with a 12 volt for a couple of reasons. One being that it was a lot cheaper and two, didn't have to deal with all the batteries. And I figured it would be enough to drive this boat around. The boat's pretty light, it's all aluminum and everything. So um, I'll show you how I rigged up the batteries and all that stuff in just a minute, but. So the first thing, I'll talk about is mounting this thing on here. Now it was kind of a pain in the butt. I had to have Josh help me a little bit. So this isn't your typical like bass boat where everything is like made to go on there or anything. This is a 2005 Polar Craft and we got a nose cone up on the front up here. And most aluminum boats will have this. Mine happens to not be flat. You can see it's kind of got a little bit of a curve to it up in here. I tried to kind of pound that out but it just wasn't moving. It's pretty hard steel so um, you see it better on the front so the first issue we had was that the motor wasn't going to sit flat and there's a big gap underneath here um, what I ended up doing was buying a piece of three-quarter inch uh, it's like PVC board it's like that uh, Aztec trim board stuff for outdoor use so it's not wood it's plastic PVC and I cut it to fit up in this corner, cut it at an angle here and an angle this way. And it just so worked out that it was the right uh, amount of spacer that I needed to level this motor out with this nose cap here. So that worked really well. And I put the rubber bushings underneath just to reduce the vibration. I actually doubled up on the one on the front. The mount itself doesn't move at all. The thing is on there, solid. So this is actually the PVC board that I was talking about. We'll see if I can get a shot of this. Okay, that's what it is. High performance cellular PVC trim. It's made for outdoor stuff. I got the seven and a quarter inch wide board and that actually fit perfect right on either side of my motor once we centered it. It just is inside the edge of the plastic there so that size seemed to work really well um, this cut out here as long as that is on the outside of the edge of the boat nothing's gonna hit so we made sure that was just outside the edge of the boat there and we were cleared everything and we were good to go and the other thing that we did was kind of once we aligned the back and got it in the right direction that we wanted we didn't want it too far out to rub up against the docks or anything else so just inside the boat there once we got that lined up we took a pencil, you can probably still see it here, yes. Some pencil marks, because these pieces were off, so the mount is actually inside a little bit more, but took some pencil marks on each side, and so we knew where to set it when it came time to mount it and where to uh, build our bracket to. So then we took the motor off, put the PVC board on there, kind of traced out our angles, cut it out in the skill saw, and boom. So we also had to get longer bolts because it came with it came with two inch bolts and that didn't really account for the spacer and the thickness of that nose cone so I went with um, a bunch of two and a half inch bolts and some three inch bolts and went all the way down through up under here. To make this super stable I actually drilled through 
the gunnel here on up in the front and right here and instead of going through plywood it goes right through the metal the frame of the boat so that's going to add a ton of strength and stability to that trolling motor so when you get the motor it comes with the bolts um, the lock nuts nylock nuts and washers and the washers are pretty small on the bottom to hold it up against the plywood so what i did was i went to uh, home depot and got the biggest stainless steel fender washers that they have let's see if we can just show you here yeah you can see those are nice big washers going to add a lot more support there and those seem to work pretty good and this is going to be different for every boat but my boat's a little bit older um, it has this up here it has a, a battery gauge and it actually had a plug to plug in a trolling motor it has that three prong plug there well when you get the Minn Kota, all it has is this cable coming out of it which is fairly short and these leads on the end of it right here so obviously i had to cut those off and go buy the adapter that plugged into that because for some reason for fifteen hundred dollars this motor doesn't come with it so everything kind of fits nicely in here too Get my pedal here it's a nice flush mount pedal and we pull that out and there's the plug that I just picked up come on focus so that plugs right into there you can kind of tuck this up in here bring that out but that plugs there and now your your power is on there so that's how I did that um, it was just easier than running a wire all the way back to the battery or even just tapping in behind that. It was just easy to, um, everything was already wired up basically to this plug. So I just bought the plug and it's just pretty easy to plug it right in. Um, the other thing that I did for wiring was just this uh, heading sensor. It's a little close to the motor, but I don't think it's going to bother, um, especially once it's deployed. And I just drilled a hole right below this to run all the wiring in. And it's actually tied in to this plug on the back side. I just uh, just tapped in the positive and negative on the back of that plug. So that's all wired up and ready to go. Go around to the back and I'll show you my uh, battery job here. Which is going to be kind of hard to see. But what we did was pull this out of the way. Um, you need a fuse when you um, have these trolling motors if you ever get kind of stuck in the weeds or anything and that prop stops spinning just so it doesn't burn up your trolling motor it'll trip that fuse so this is a 60 amp fuse um, I think it's made by Minn Kota actually so uh, I just rigged up a little tab there and fed it right off the battery for your positive lead and I actually put in this boat only came with a single tray for a battery and I'm only running one battery here for a 12 volt system but I put in a double tray because I assume down the line I'm not sure how long that battery is going to last me out in the water people I've talked to that are sell the things of course they're salesmen say it'll run all day on one battery but I have my doubts so um, just to be on the safe side I can put another battery in there down the road once I test this thing out some and just rig them in parallel so I'll have plenty of juice to run all day long and yeah it was pretty simple wiring the other thing that I got that you should really look at is a onboard charger so that's what these wires are for and I had to actually mount that up up front here but I wanted to put it here but I couldn't get my batteries in there's not much room in these in these boats they don't make a lot of room to put all this stuff so just gonna show you really quick where my charger is right there it's a two bank 10 amp onboard charger one lead goes to my cranking battery and one lead goes to the trolling motor battery so all you have to do and I just screwed that right into the side of my boat there but all you have to do is come over here now and take that wall plug pull it right out plug it into an extension cord or plug it into the wall if you're in the garage and uh, charge them up overnight so pretty easy um, that was not too bad of a job um, but that's what I did there the trolling motor uh, should be pretty good this year the only thing that I'm worried about 
is I'm gonna probably have to put a brace on this thing um, just because it going down the road and whatnot you can see the mount doesn't move at all it's just the motor so the thing is secure super stable but to keep this from rattling around I think I'm gonna build a uh, just a stabilizer arm that goes right here probably at a PVC or metal conduit I'll put a base here that screws in and then I'll just have the arm going up and resting around that so it doesn't jiggle all over the place but uh, maybe I'll make a different video of that at some point but anyways just a quick video of the Minkota Tarova this is how we had to mount it on my V-Haul um, just in case anyone's trying to do that for themselves just a, an idea to use this um, PVC board, you can get it right at Home Depot. It's a little expensive, but it's not too bad. It's definitely worth getting. Anyways, guys, just a quick video for you. I'm pretty pumped to have this motor on. We're going to get it out and do the calibration for it, and then it should be ready to go. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later, but like I showed you just a minute ago, it's completely dumping outside. We were down to bare ground here just the other day. The next thing we're going to do with the boat is we're going to wrap it. So... Um, already ordered the wrap but you guys will see what it is it's gonna be kind of cool so I got to start working on stripping all the decals off of this thing it's not gonna be fun but um, we're gonna do it and then it should look pretty sweet alright guys thanks for watching we'll catch you guys next time